Hey guys, Aaron here. Today we're gonna to be working on replacing and properly diagnosing an O2 sensor on this Ford F-150. This truck is a 2015 with a 3.5 liter. And as you can see, we do have the check engine light illuminated there. I pulled the codes and we do have P0151 and we do have intermittently P0059, which is a heater resistance code. Um, as you can see, P0151 did go permanent, I believe after 2011 or 2012-ish, um, we did come up, or they did come up with permanent codes, not just for these are all, any OBD2 cars have permanent codes. And when the code goes permanent, you can't just clear the code and wish it away, hoping it will not come back. It will stay permanent until the computer has seen that the issue has been resolved, and then the code will not be permanent. Just to kind of show you guys, we'll clear the code here, and as you can see, we clear the codes, but the permanent code stayed there, which is P0151. If you have P0131, what that is, is an issue with bank one sensor one. We don't have that issue there. Uh, we have P0151, of course. So let's go ahead and go into some of the data pits that we look at, such as freeze frame data and live sensor data just so we can condemn the O2 sensor actually being bad because a lean condition or a fuel starvation issue is a very um, common common problem with these O2 sensor codes appearing. So we definitely wanna replace the right part to get this thing done. So the first thing I like to do is just go into freeze frame data. And what freeze frame data is, is it's a snapshot of a lot of engine PIDs and a lot of uh, sensor uh, data when the fault occurs. The computer kind of takes a snapshot. It's called mode two in OBD uh, two data. I'm gonna access that and I'm gonna look to see, you know, what was the calculated load of the engine? Were we at idle? Was he at full throttle? Where, where, what was the engine doing when this occurred? It's also gonna look at fuel trims to see, you know, was the left side of the engine running leaner than the right? It's gonna give us some good information. So let me pull that up. All right, so here we are in the freeze frame data. This is basically the, sh the snapshot I was talking about. We were at 50% throttle, um, so we were accelerating. When we are accelerating, there is a higher demand for fuel. So anytime you have a lean code or an oxygen sensor code, it could be from the engine running lean, like I said earlier. So what I do with that is I'll look at our long-term fuel trim here and being at 1.6 for bank one and 1.6 for bank two, that's pretty even and that's a pretty low number. This positive number re represents um, the computer adding fuel off of the base factory fuel schedule. Um, bank two short term is at 8.6 and bank one short term is at 8.6. That's not really an issue to see that high of a number. Anytime we see more than 10 positive or 10 negative, the fuel, the, the computer is trying to add or subtract a lot of fuel and that's not what we see, what we wanna see. Um, so right here, I could tell the engine isn't running lean which is a concern when dealing with these codes. Um, so that leads me to believe that we do in fact have a bad O2 sensor. Let's go ahead and go into the live data. The vehicle is running right now. I got it up to operating temperature. So let's go ahead and see what those O2 sensors are doing and we can compare both sides. All right, so I'm just scanning for O2 sensor data. Let's go ahead and select that. That's gonna bring up all of our PIDs relating to O2 sensor and fuel trim operation. Uh, okay, so there's a couple things that we want to look at. We went over in freeze frame data our short term and long term fuel trims, but I'll just look at them again since this is live data. All right, so right here we see O2 sensor is warm and ready to operate. Yes, um, O2 sensor bank two sensor one, which is our fault code. Um, sensor is warm and ready to operate that says no so that's something else we need to consider um, we possibly have a bad circuit um, for our heater element inside of our O2 sensor let's go ahead and look at our voltages for O2 sensors and what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare bank one with bank two uh, bank two sensor one which is closest to the motor is the sensor that we're having an issue with so now I'm gonna select the voltages and I'm just gonna bring up a graph to compare them. We're gonna sort all of our selected data and then we're gonna expand and we're gonna turn these data into graphs. Um, 
Yep, and this one is in a graph already. So we see bank one, sensor one is oscillating pretty good. Um, you can see some movement. If we go to put it in gear or rev it up, it responds pretty well to our commands there. We're looking right here. If we look at bank two, sensor one, it's at a steady 11.72, which is um, why we're having that issue with the code coming up. So it's pretty pretty clear that that O2 sensor is inactive. Before you go ahead and replace the sensor, a good thing to do is just to check out the wires and the connection. Um, with this truck being you know kind of new, I'm not worried about that, but I will inspect that before I replace it. Also, if you are having P0131, which is bank one sensor one, and P0151, which is bank two sensor one, both coming on, those those codes are both active. One thing that you do have to consider is that, you know, the likelihood of two sensors failing at once is not very likely at all. And you probably do have a lean condition or a fuel starvation issue uh, with your high pressure fuel pump or even your low pressure fuel pump since this is a direct injected motor we do have two fuel pumps on these motors and one last thing that i like to look at is our fuel pressure and our overall fuel system condition since these motors are direct injected fuel pressure is just essential to the engine running properly and smoothly um i really look at two data pits here fuel rail pressure desired and fuel rail pressure, which is the actual pressure. Uh, the desired is just what it should be. The actual fuel pressure um, is real time pressure in the fuel system itself. So I'll go ahead and just expand uh, and then we'll sort the data. So that's all we're looking at. As you can see that it's in a line graph. Um, desired is 199 and actual is 192. Now it's good to see what they're at at idle, but the most important thing that we need to do is see what they're doing during a full throttle run. And the reason why we wanna see what they're doing during full throttle is because that's when we have a fuel starvation issue. Not very much fuel is required at idle. So if we have, you know, maybe a clogged filter in the tank, or if we have a failing low pressure pump or high pressure pump, it's definitely gonna, you're definitely gonna see it um, over here. It's not uncommon to see pressure go into the thousands. Uh, these high pressure fuel systems work off of incredible amount of fuel pressure. All right, so we're gonna go on a quick little pull here. I'm gonna hold the, the camera steady the best I can. All right, just gonna slow it down. As you can see, our actual fuel pressure is 2,207, and our desired is 2,100. And 99, which is pretty pretty close. You should see it should be within you know 30 psi of each other. Anytime you see 20 or 30 psi difference between the actual pressure and the desired, we know that we have a fuel issue. Um, and it's nice to have a scanner that actually saves this data, this real time data, like this one here. If you're looking for the scanner, I'll go ahead and post a link in the description of where you can purchase it just makes uh, diagnosing these issues kind of, you know, with modern vehicles that much so easier. either a 7 8 open end wrench or an O2 sensor socket. Uh, this is a little bit more handy than the wrench, especially if you have a lot of rust and a 3 8 ratchet. Now, when it comes to replacing electrical sensors on these Ford trucks, I like to stick with Motocraft. Um, there are two different part numbers for the left and right side upstream sensors. Uh, this is going to be the left side. This is going to be the right side, which is bank one. I'll go ahead and throw a link in the description for these parts. Uh, keep in mind, if you have the 2.7 liter, you're going to need different part numbers than the ones that you see right here. So I'll go ahead and make sure to list those as well. Now the O2 sensors that we're worried about here are the upstream sensors. Uh, this is bank two on the driver's side. Here's bank one on the passenger side. The oxygen sensors that are in the catalytic converter are not really used for fuel trims. They're used mainly for monitoring the efficiency of the catalytic converter. So we're not gonna be messing with them. They are the downstream O2 sensors. So uh, as far as removing the O2 sensors, uh, we can go ahead and take our 7 8 socket and crack the O2 sensor loose. And if you're seeing a lot of rust on your vehicle, it might be a good idea just to go ahead and start with the O2 sensor socket. It generally gets a better bite and you have a less chance of stripping the sensor that way. All 
All right, so with the O2 sensor cracked loose, let's go ahead and work on the connector. On this side, it's easiest to go ahead and remove the connector from the top of the motor. Now on the 3.5 liter motor, there's a little tab that's on the back of the valve cover. We're on the driver's side valve cover here and that tab looks to be missing. So go ahead to press the back of the connector once you have uh, the little push rivet loose and then you could take your O2 sensor and unconnect it. All right, so now that we got the old sensor out, let's go ahead and throw the new sensor in. All right, so now that we got the sensor installed, it's time to go ahead and go over our voltage and our data just to confirm our fix. As you can see here, bank one sensor one, just like before, is oscillating nicely. Bank two sensor one is now oscillating before. If you remember earlier in the video, we were having issues with this side staying at a particular value. Now, when I rev it up, uh, it's, you know, it's gonna go ahead and change accordingly, which is what we should be seeing. And both sides of the motor are operating the same, which is a good thing. And then our O2 sensor is warm and ready to operate. As uh, Before it was not on bank two and bank one is still yes. So we know everything is good there now. Now it's time to go ahead and clear the codes and we are going to clear the keep alive memory. Um, so we're just gonna select here going to read DTCs and I went ahead and cleared it earlier but we can go ahead and clear it again and then we're going to reset the cam one thing that's important is that you have to have the ignition on engine off whenever you clear the cam that's just going to clear all the fuel trims um, and there we are so that pretty much wraps up this video guys uh, we confirmed the fix we replaced the part if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave something in the comment section uh, please check the links in the description as well thanks again as always guys see you next time